Count the number of times he insults my intelligence versus the number of times he is demonstrably wrong. So let's think about this logically. I'd love to, which is why I'm here, because I don't feel like you're up to the task. Did you know that abortion is already illegal according to the Constitution? Life begins at conception, then abortion kills someone without due process of the law. See, I fucking knew it. If life begins at conception, you're not even a full fucking sentence in, and we've already fucking lost it. If I had a million dollars, I'd be a millionaire, but I don't, and I'm not. If he says he doesn't think I'm a logical person, but then criticizes me for opening my argument with a conditional statement, which means he doesn't realize that a hypothetical syllogism is a valid form of argument in class classical logic and it begins with a conditional statement. This form of argument has been known about for over 2,500 years and was named by Theophrastus, one of Aristotle's students. I'm using the modus ponens version of the argument which reasons that if A implies B and A is true, then B must be true. Here's a shot of the argument if you did not see the original video that he's criticizing. Insulting somebody's ability to think logically while not recognizing a syllogism when it's staring you straight in the face. I don't want you to feel embarrassed, but the irony is a little bit too rich not to point out. But honestly, he shouldn't be that embarrassed because we took formal logic out of the classroom when we took the trivium out of our curriculum. If you're a grown up looking to grow in your ability to think logically, I highly recommend this one. You're wanting to talk about how the constitution applies to a person. So I need you to put your book of fairy tales away that you obviously also haven't read because that doesn't say life begins at conception either. And if you watch any of my videos on abortion, I never talk about the Bible because it just isn't germane to the topic at hand. The Bible doesn't say that life begins at conception. It simply says it's wrong to kill innocent humans. The question of when life begins is a scientific one, which is why I provided scientific sources in the video. Pick up a law book, since we're talking about, you know, the law. And according to U.S. law under 1 U.S. Code 8, the words person, human being, child, and individual shall include every member of the species of Homo sapien that are born alive. You know what doesn't happen at conception? Being born alive! Since a fetus hasn't been born alive, it is by constitutional definition not a fucking person, and therefore not entitled to constitutional rights like due fucking process. Okay, so this one actually is kind of embarrassing for you. You did correctly quote this portion, but you didn't read down to section C. To say that this law excludes a fetus from being legally protected as a person is explicitly contradicted by section C. Nothing in the section shall be construed to deny or contract any legal status or right applicable to the species homo sapien prior to being born alive. So the point of this bill was actually this specific word right here, which you did include, but you didn't notice. In 2002, people were shocked by stories by people like Jill Senek, who reported people performing live birth abortions at certain hospitals. They learned that in case after case, Dr. Gosnell and his assistants induced labor, forced the live birth of viable babies in the sixth, seventh, and eighth month of pregnancy, and then killed those babies by cutting into the back of their necks with scissors. There was no legal loophole to justify this act, but there were certain political actors that pretended like there was, such as in 1977, Judge Clement Hainsworth ruled that there's no obligation to preserve the life of a child who survived an abortion. Or again, Judge Marion Barry, speaking of partial birth abortion, said that you can't even speak about those children as being born because, why? They weren't wanted, and those children are different because they were marked for termination. So this bill that you quoted only exists to stop people from performing live birth abortions and explicitly condemns in no uncertain terms your particular interpretation of the law. Life begins at conception. Every embryology textbook, all of mammalian biology, and 95% of all biologists who work professionally in the field agree with that sentence. You know, I'm not even going to bother to fact check your probably very wildly unreliable sources. It doesn't matter whatever Texas school board biology book you dig up says, but some Prager U biologist suddenly says life begins at conception and now we need to trust the science. Like, get fucking real. Refusing to fact check somebody's sources is not a flex, my friend. It is an admission of guilt. Let's read some of these sources. First, a person is simply a human being regarded as an individual. So let's see what the science says about the beginning of life and when humans become individuals. From Walter Williams and Peter Singer, published by Oxford University Press, the developing individual between the union of germ cells and the completion of the organs which characterize its body when it becomes a separate organism at the moment the sperm cell of the human male meets the ovum of the female and the union results in the fertilized egg a new life has begun this scientific encyclopedia says that humans are individuals and that a new human life has begun at the moment of fertilization this embryology textbook says that almost all higher animals start their lives as a single fertilized cell and this is the beginning of what an individual so despite your disparaging marks about prager you this is not a single conservative biologist but this is as i pointed out the consensus of 95 percent of all biologists which is interesting because you seem to really care a lot about consensus when it comes to other matters and you brought up that you wanted to talk about the constitutionality of abortion and then you go on to talk about everything that is not the constitution he's having a hard time following the logic but that reason we went into the science there was because i was defending the third premise in my logical syllogism of course he doesn't know what a syllogism is and while he he didn't actually criticize my use of the Fifth Amendment. For your own edification, let's jump into the 
14th Amendment. All persons born or naturalized in the United States are subject to their jurisdiction thereof are citizens. Now, what that means is, is that a fetus is not going to be a citizen because they were not born in America. But this bill doesn't only protect citizens. It explicitly protects those who are not citizens, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process or deny to any person within its jurisdiction. This is specifically talking about non-citizen residents, any person within its jurisdiction, the equal protection of the law. And therefore, because we just saw that the fetus fits the definition both of a living human and of a person, it is entitled to equal protection of the law, no matter what of the 50 states it finds itself in the jurisdiction of. I've heard of moving the goalposts, but you're moving the whole goddamn stadium. Defending one of the premises of a syllogism that I presented is not moving the goalposts, but it would be moving the goalposts if I were to bring up like your stance on climate change or your belief about evolution or the COVID vaccination or something like that. Also, suddenly now you care about science? 99.9% .9 of scientists say anthropological climate change is a real existential problem, and you're like, oh, conspiracy. 99% of scientists accept the theory of evolution, and you're like, that's just a theory. Or how about the science behind vaccine efficacy? Not only did he move the goalposts, which is what he accused me of, but then he created straw man, misrepresenting every one of my positions on every one of those topics. And finally, it was an attack on me instead of on my argument, which is an ad hominem fallacy. Three all at once. That's pretty impressive. I'm going to go ahead and counter your argument and say that not only is abortion not already banned by the Constitution? Restricting or outlawing abortion is actually illegal. 14th Amendment says that no state shall deprive a person of life, liberty, or property. A woman, who is the person in this scenario, has the liberty or the freedom to make the decisions to do with her life and her property, which is her body. Legally, blood and tissue is considered a person's property. She uses her liberty to make her life decision to remove a foreign object from her body. Uh, she can do that. And I know the people who make these kinds of arguments tend not to be real brushed up on the female anatomy. A uterus, you know that place where the fetus grows? That's part of her body. Since he's not really great with logical syllogisms, I went ahead and took his argument and put it into one for him. The 14th Amendment outlaws depriving women of freedom without due process. Preventing abortion is depriving a woman of freedom and telling her what to do with her private property without due process, and therefore preventing abortion is illegal. But we're just asking to fall into logical fallacies whenever we don't use precise language. So let's rewrite that second premise. Preventing a woman from intentionally killing her fetus, an individual human, in the womb is depriving a woman of freedom without due process. Now that's obviously untrue. Just as it's not a deprivation of somebody's freedom or property to prevent them from killing their born children. It's not a deprivation of their freedom or property to keep them from killing their unborn children. One last lesson for all of us, it's never embarrassing to be wrong or to misread a paragraph here or there, but whenever you do so while disparaging those you disagree with as absolute rubes and idiots, is really just setting yourself up for a fall.